want to know how you prepare for a golf tournament. Ah, uh, well, I um, hit balls maybe 20 minutes, play a little bit, smoke four or five cigarettes, drink three Diet Cokes, and go to the first tee. Some days I won't even go to the range. Jim Moore, how are you, sir? It is the uh, Daily Puck Drop here with uh, Jim Moore. It's uh, Jason Puckett. We welcome you in. It's our first uh, Daily Puck Drop here where we are going We are going live. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. How are you, Puck? Another beautiful good. day here in Bend, Oregon. Yeah, it always is. Yeah. It always is a beautiful day there in Bend, Oregon. All right, if you're just joining us for the first time, it is the Daily Puck Drop. We do it every single day. We usually record this. And then we play it back. But we decided to go live today. Why Why did we decide to go live today here on YouTube and X? I don't know. We just decided to do it uh, today. But here we are. Jim is in the Ben Garage. I am in the Puck Sports Studios. You can see behind me, it's built by Limbach Lumber, family owned and serving the Northwest since 1930. The Northwest premier supplier of specialized lumber and moldings. Jim, you know this. It is summer Deck and fence season. In fact, we're going to get a new fence out here in the uh, backyard. We're going to go shop and get our lumber from Limbach Lumber. You can do the same thing. You can contact the folks at Limbach Lumber, 206-782-3487. Visit them online at limbacklumber.com. Puck Sports Studios built by Limbach Lumber. And again, you can watch this. You're watching it live right now here on X, also on YouTube. Uh, later, the podcast will be out on Apple, Spotify, wherever you find your podcast. Daily puck drop every day at 10 a.m. Then we release our guests around uh, 1 o'clock. You can follow me on X at Puck2040. Also, the same handle on Instagram. The The daughters convinced me to be on TikTok, so it's at Puck underscore sports. And then, of course, on Facebook. Jim, how can people interact with you? on the old social media uh they can catch me on facebook where the old people hang out and i'm an old person so i hang out there you know it's probably not cool i hardly ever go to instagram and then my my kids have forbidden me to get on tiktok i I brought it up one day and i go hey what do you guys think about me getting on tiktok and they were like absolutely not what was their reasoning for you them not wanting you to be on tiktok too Too old. old yeah and then I don't know what I'm doing. I'm I don't what, what the hell do you do on TikTok? Isn't it just 15 second videos? Yeah, I mean it's nothing. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you this. It's it's everybody like my age these like in like parents and stuff like 30s, 40s, 50s now, they're all on it. Like I, Are all they? those you know, you know all those clips I do like after the show like you know 30 second 66 uh, you know 60 second clips of you or or the guests and stuff. You right put them on the TikTok. Show, well, we put them everywhere, but TikTok is like unbelievable. It's like ridiculous. Like the well, one you get one, wait a minute. You get more when you say that you get more views on TikTok than you do anywhere else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like like the one we did months ago of Chris Egan talking about he wanted to serve Costco hot dogs at his wedding. It it's like a million views or something. Is it? It's it's insane. It's like ridiculous. That's a great idea that Chris has. Well, Chris is a Chris is a uh, he's a he's a man of great ideas. We're going to talk to Chris coming up on on Friday. I don't know when we're going to record Chris. I have no idea because he's nine hours ahead. But we eventually we'll get to him at some point. Well, that's we'll good because he's over person. there at the Olympics and he'll be pressed for time, but he'll always have time for you, right? He will always have a time uh, for uh, for me and always a time for you. All right, we're going to talk about the Mariners today. Hey, did you know Seahawks training camp opens up today, Jim? Uh, ladies and gentlemen is going to go over his top 1,000 storylines, starting here in a little bit of all these storylines. I love the way you just mock the biggest story in town. What, Seahawks training camp? Yeah. I mean, because we we know the Seahawks are the big behemoth of sports radio, right? I mean, we need to talk about the Seahawks. Yes, you are. I'm not mocking the Seahawks. I'm mocking everybody that comes out with their, here's my top 15 storylines heading into camp. You know what? They're all the same goddamn storylines. Everybody's got the same ones. Yeah. Offensive but... line stings. What's Gino going to do? How's Ryan Grubb going to translate to the NFL? Yada, yada, yada. It's always the same. Yeah, well, I mean, what what else are they supposed are we, to do? They have those studies that show different? that, no. like when you have top 10 lists, people are more apt to read them or listen to them. Okay. So, so yeah. But I like so, that you're just kind of lukewarm on it. And well, I, I don't get as I, fired I, up I, for training camp as other people do. And you know that. And you're the same way. Yeah. I, I, 
Yeah, I'll be honest. I always am with you. Not, are you always honest? And why do, why do people always say I'll be honest? Like they've been lying. I, until I that think point? I'm always honest. I love football. I love the Seahawks. No, I, I don't particularly get my, you know, get like, oh, I can't wait for training camp to start. I mean, I, it's the guy, they're running around in practice. They, you know, don't, they I, don't do anything. Well, I'm conflicted usually when I'm out there because I'm going, God, this is a privilege to be here. People would like to trade spots with me well, to be here. Sure. But then when I start watching practice, I'm kind of going, God, I need to talk to Condota or Hugh Millen or Wyman or somebody to tell me what what I should be looking for. And well, because, you know, I mean, I, I follow football, but in different ways than most people. Like, I don't give one shit. I still couldn't tell you of the garbage guys here, by the way. Did, well, did you put your garbage out? Yeah. He, What's his name? Do you know the garbage well, guy's I, name? I don't, know, I don't know what his name is. But Are you sorry, a, sorry for the noise. Hey, thank it, you. It, Go it, Cougs. <laughs> <laughs> I wish he would flip you off. Separate your paper and glass, you son of a bitch. Um, no, okay. Okay, complete honesty. Like, oh, whenever yes, I hear that three technique and five technique bullshit, I just kind of go, I still don't know exactly what it means. Even though Hugh Millen's told me a million times, Jim, you know, the five oh. technique is lined up off the left shoulder of the right tackle. And I'm like, oh, I don't give a shit. I don't no. want. I do not want technique in, in game stories, in interviews. Tell me if he's a, a nose tackle, a defensive tackle, a defensive end. Oh, wait a minute. You can't say defensive end anymore. He plays the edge. He's, <laughs> and, and you always, and you know you're, you're a good player. If you're a really good player oh. if, you see, if you set the edge. And if you don't yeah, yeah, set you, the you, edge, then you suck. Out. What about this? What about this, though? You, you, can't say, you can't say middle linebacker anymore. Why? Because it's the mic. Oh, the mic and the will. And, then, and the uh, will. You can't what? say he's an outside linebacker. No, oh, it's not outside linebacker. It's will. And it's, it, it's, and then it's the people that cover the sport oh, now. The Sam. Not, That's right. The Sam the, is the Sam, strong side. The Sam and the will. You, know, you yeah. can't say outside linebacker anymore. And then it's the, these guys that cover it. And not so much the beat guys, but all these other. And there's so many of these Seahawks coverage going on right now. And they're like, you know, and, and they talk like they're, you know, like they're Mike McDonald. F off and your camera and you're all 22s. No one did do fan. I don't fans really care about that stuff. Do they really get into that? I don't know. I mean, maybe they do. Well, I think they might, you know, then there's kind of that OLB, you know, the outside linebacker, but he's yeah. also kind of a pass rusher and he also <laughs> needs to cover guys occasionally and set but the well, edge. But we're just excited about the storylines that go into it. Right. Like I want to, I want to know how Mike McDonald's going to coach in his first year. Like, what what is he like as an NFL coach? No one knows. Yeah, never I have been a zero idea what he's going to be like. Aren't you excited about him though? Because I I am. It takes a lot to excite me anymore. Does but, it without it without taking a pill? Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got uh, what do I have in there? Yeah, I got Tadalafel. It's the generic version of Cialis. Yeah, yeah. just wait and till you're work? In, wait till you're in your sixties, okay? I don't want to wait. I just I want to take it now. Oh, you can take it now. I'm sure you can. I think you can take it, take it at any time. This uh, Seahawks coverage brought to you by Tadafol. <laughs> Tadafol. When you need to get up, use Tadafol. It's what the Seahawks players use I, to just get up a for quick, practice. Quick, quick story on that. When I was in my early 40s, when I first met Kathy, we uh, were over at her brother-in-law's house. Careful. And I was in the bathroom, and he comes in. He goes, hey, hey, Jim, Jim. Yeah, yeah. What? And he go, Bill. What do you want? And he goes. He goes here, and he held out. He held out the little blue pill, and I looked at it in his palm, and I was like, "Hey, you know what, man? I don't need that. I don't. I, I really don't need that." And he goes, "Ah, well, come on. You might want to try it." And I was like, "Yeah, what yeah. the hell?" So I pulled, took it out of his palm, popped it in. Yeah. So long story short, we get to Kathy's that night, and we're in her bedroom, and we we start arguing about something. I still needed to break up with some girl that I was seeing on this, you know, when I met her and yeah, uh -huh. it, it got ugly, but I mean, the little blue pill worked. It's, it, it was, it always says, you know, you need to be in the mood. You need to be sexually aroused, but it, it, so it at your for age, you. at your age, anyway, you can, without all that sexual arousement stuff, you can still, the pill does its thing in your forties.
Okay, so we need a set. We need a sponsor for Jim. If you if you run a uh, an yeah. ED Cialis Tadafol, is that what it is? Is there a local one? We need it's a, a generic local one. generic version of uh, Cialis. Yeah, but I know we need like a local one. Is there someone like in Seattle, Washington State that makes one? You know what I mean? Like their own version of it. We need a local one because we're we're know. all about local advertisement. All right. So the Seahawks. So expect like it is a big day. It's the it's day one of training camp. It's day one for him. It's you know it's. It's a new era. It's going to be weird, like to see the photos and all that stuff come out from it, and to not see Carol running out there with his baggy khakis on and his long white sleeve shirt and his and his and his sunglasses and his football gloves. It's just that's going to be weird. Well, yeah, because Pete's always, you know, hey, hey, let's go, let's go, let's go. We got to, got to hear from Pete on voicemails. Come on, we got to get going. Yeah, yeah. Where is Pete? Uh, we need Pete on voicemails. Yeah. God. Uh, yeah, McDonald seems uh, kind of opposite of Pete Carroll that way. I don't think he's going to be a sound bite waiting to happen. Uh, he seems like a pretty good guy. It's weird to me that he's like half my age, but you know, well, I, I'm I'm he... I'm happy that it's just like I'm happy that the Cougs have a new basketball coach that's you know 35, 36 years old. I like the idea that the Seahawks are going going the younger route and uh, and giving a guy a chance. And I and how can you not like? I know you wanted an offensive guy. Like you wanted the Detroit guy, right? What was his name again? Ben Johnson. But then, like yeah. after talking to Garrett Fuller afterwards about it, like how he didn't do well in any of the interviews, I was like, well, maybe it was a good thing they didn't get Ben Johnson. Yeah, because defense has been kind of non-existent around oh, here I for a while. I thought you were going to say defense, you know, wins championships. God, I thought you were going to say that. And this is what do you, the type what do you of, take this me is for? the type of stuff that people miss about our radio coverage. <laughs> They're at the VMAC. <laughs> no, no, I, I just, again, I'm not an X's and O's guy. I'm a point spread guy. Okay. Well, I, that, I'm we not, both are. no, That's but I'm we, not we, X's we, and O's, but I, I am for the first time in a long time, kind of curious mm. what his X's and O's seem different than other people's X's and O's. So I'm kind of curious how that's all going to come together. Well, his defense looks like, you know, his defense when you like even when you watched it against Seattle and then and just watched it all year all year long right there was that great game and what late in the season December against San Francisco remember they just they bludgeoned the 49ers like his MO is to sit there and and disguise a bunch of stuff right and give you a lot of like you hear this all the time with offensive guys like Shanahan there's a lot of window dressing going on like he, you know, motions and shifting guys because they want your eyes to be looking at like, oh, what's he doing? But they're really just running some simple play off tackle. Mm -hmm. And that's what McDonald does. McDonald gives you a bunch of like different looks for an offense to cut, try and confuse you. But, you know, really he's playing a pretty vanilla based defense. But the look is trying to be confusing. So, yeah, I think that it's a great counter. I mean, look at the coaches that are – look at the two coaches that are in this division that you need to get by. They're two offensive masterminds. And you're countering with a young version, you know, a younger version on the other side of the ball head coach. I, I think that's a fascinating storyline. Don't see if Mike McDonald can match, you know, his, his play calls, his um, – ability as a coordinator to match those guys I, that'd be fun to watch because well, carol I, couldn't carol couldn't do it the last few years no and then how much of it is that baltimore system and how much of it was the baltimore talent and and how much talent uh, is here sure. and i mean there's definitely going to be a, a learning curve and growing pains and all those cliches but i, I i'm interested to watch to see it all, how it all plays out i i can't imagine they're going to be as bad against the run no matter who they throw out there uh, and I'm thrilled that Diggs and Adams aren't here anymore. I mean, I, 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 Julian Love, remember that first game he had? I think it was a Monday night game, and he was all over the field when Adams was out. And uh, oh. so he'll be good back there. And so, yeah, I, defensively, they we're going to see hopefully leaps and bounds of improvement. But then the other side of the ball, too, well, you got Grubb and you got Huff on the offense. Oh, Grubby's back! So all that's going to be different. I, I hear all this stuff about how they're going to push it down the field and go vertical uh, and all yeah, that. Vertical, and, and maybe it'll work because Gino can throw the deep ball a little bit. But I kind of puck. I know you. What like about hey hey really really what what about DK's route tree? Oh no no I'm not I wasn't thinking about him I'm thinking about Sam Howell I like Sam Howell. Oh you want to do a bet? 
We got a lot of action in Bend today. I don't know what the hell is going yeah, what on. What is going on? You had, uh, was that a fire truck earlier? <laughs> was that a police? What You had sirens earlier. Now you have sirens again. You had the, the dump truck guy stop by. Did he respond when you said go Cougs? Uh, no, he did not. He did okay. not. What, what is that? Is that, a, is that the police or, or fire? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. They're just going Probably by fire. on the road behind me. Yeah. Fire fire season, July 24th. Bend. Yeah. That's Sorry to interrupt that hard-hitting football talk we were having. It was hard-hitting. Well, you know, as, as excited as you are about McDonald, I mean, I said this, I've said this multiple times to Rob Staten, uh, Rob, uh, who's just great. He'll, he'll be with us throughout the, the football season, covering the Seahawks, SeahawksDraftBlog.com, uh, every Thursday, along with uh, Mike Garofolo of the NFL Network. But, um, as excited as, cause he's like you, he, he's more excited about McDonald, which I, I totally get. I, in a weird way, am more, a little bit more excited about what Ryan Grubb's going to do with that offense. Cause I look at that offense and if they can just improve the line a little bit, look at all the playmakers they got. I mean, they got some good playmakers. They had a good wide receiver core, uh, lo- love their two running backs. I think their tight end room is a little underrated. I think it'd be fun to watch. Um, and then Geno Smith's capable. Um, and I, I'm just excited to see, like, Grubb, who goes from, you know, Colin plays in college, can he make that leap to the NFL? And, and how different will it look? I think everyone thinks it's going to look like what he did at Washington with Penix. And I don't think it's going to look the same. I mean, I don't, I mean, they, they were just so uber talented at Washington. I, I think you'll look more like what they did at Fresno. And I think that the one thing about Grubb, I think there's this narrative out there that they don't run the ball enough. Well, when he was at Fresno and they were calling plays because they had two running, they had two 1000 yard running backs. I mean, they, they, they ran the ball plenty and they even ran the ball with Washington when they were the most effective with who was at Dylan Johnson, they were running the ball. So, I mean, I, I, I think it, it, yeah, when Johnson got hurt, when Johnson got hurt, that really hurt him, you know, not having that, that running component, but no, there's, yeah, I, I think offensively they're going to be fine except for, I mean, all the oh, that offensive line is the mess. line. Yeah, uh, the interior of the line. I mean, you like you like Cross. Cross is really the only sure thing, isn't he? I mean, I suppose they. Who's the other but guy? Needs, they, but the guy needs, they got at left guard. They like him too. Sorry, his name escapes me. Yeah, yeah, Tomlinson. Yeah, yeah, but the rest of it is kind of a hodgepodge. Well, they're they're thinking Olo with Timmy is going to be the center, but I mean, what about our guy Lucas? You can't count on him. He didn't pass his phys- – the other guys have passed their physicals, right, the two linebackers, and then also Anthony Bradford is going to be competing for that competing for that right guard spot. But, yeah, Abe Lucas, I did see video of him lifting and, and doing some stuff here recently, so maybe he's he's getting closer. But, yeah, I mean, when it was diagnosed last year for him as a chronic knee issue, I mean, that's yeah, when you good. hear when you hear chronic, that's – I mean, and you're going to hear successful surgery, but if it's chronic, I think that means it's a lifetime. When I hear chronic, it takes me back to high school and college. But anyways, continue. <laughs> so, yeah, and then what? You plug George Fant in there, and then you're good to go. So so we'll see. I mean, the, the well, offensive the other line. Guy, there's, yeah, there's yeah. another guy, Raekwon or uh, O'Neal. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if here's a, here's here's the hard-hitting analysis that, that you're going to hear for the next month, people out there at training camp, right? And, it's, and you know what? We can sum it up real quick here in about 10 seconds. They don't do shit this year if they can't block. That's it. That's all you need to know. Well, that's well, all you need to know about the team. They that, won't do anything if they can't block. That's done. But doesn't that go for every team everywhere and every league and every level? Well, yeah, but but that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> I mean, what? we manufacture all these storylines. We don't all you want to give it. people something different that they're not going to get somewhere else? They're not going to get it. You're not going to get anything I mean, different. they might be listening to Bump and Stacy right now or, you know, Greg and Chris at our old station. And we got to give them something different, don't we? Okay. Is Joey Blunt still on the team? <laughs> is he? <laughs> I don't think he is. I want Sam Howell to be the starting quarterback at some point. Okay, so year. you want him. I so want I wrote... Sam Howell in the okay. worst way. I just, so do you... He's the future. That's why they got him. That's why they didn't, you know, really think that they needed to get a quarterback in the draft this year. I think they really like Sam Howell. I know he needs to cut down on his interceptions, but just I a just, bit. I just come back to the game he had in Seattle last year, and I'm going, hey, you know what? That guy's pretty good. Yeah, that but it was also against good. that defense, which was pretty pretty bad. 
Well, okay. Okay. Hey, do I do I do I do I smell a bet? No, yeah, but I'm not very good on you know what? I suck on these quarterback bets. Do you? Hey, you're gonna like this. I have to refund my gambling account. Yeah, well. Because I finally got down to zero after you know playing on eight hundred dollars for the better for part how many, of two years. How many years? Two years, which I I still think is is a success. I do too. I do too. But I need to restock it because I want to. Um, you know, you're on a hot streak with your under bets. So I want to get back with you on that. I, I want to bet on the. Th- I want to bet on the three M Open, which starts tomorrow. That but is. here's the, here's the. Do you here's... have a favorite? I need someone. I I've been really bad this year with my picks. Got oh. I've missed. I have missed picks. Uh, and then everyone I pick finishes last. So. Well, one of the two guys I I took was a defending champion, uh, Lee Hodges, because he won by seven shots last year. So I I, I'm I'm big on is. I'm big on horses for the courses, you know that kind of thing. <laughs> sure. Uh, but anyway, the reason I bring this up and it's probably pathetic and uh, but I kind of like it anyway. Uh, I get $823 in unemployment every week, and I'm going to refund my betting account with money I'm getting from unemployment. You know what? And if somebody thinks that's wrong, that, you know, I should be making ends meet with my $823, I'm sorry. But I got fired by KJR, and one of the benefits of getting fired is being eligible to collect the unemployment. And by God, I'm going to collect that damn money. You know, All when right? they set up I'm going to collect that money. When huh? they set up the unemployment process, they did envision <laughs> a scenario where you would, the individual would be sent the unemployment check and then immediately take that and put it right in back into an offshore betting account. Illegal account. <laughs> and, uh, well, well, it's offshore. Isn't everything offshore is illegal? Here's the best thing about our, our off, offshore betting account. We can't even get the money. No, I know you got to get like so Bitcoin. That's what's so stupid about it. Yeah, I Bitcoin. tried to get it one time, and they were like, well, we can get it to you in Bitcoin. I'm like, yeah, well, shit, I don't want Bitcoin, man. I want actual cash money. That's why I never went over like 100 bucks. I just did it just to do it because it's just so stupid. I don't, I don't want Bitcoin. <laughs> the hell's Bitcoin going to pay me in? Um, so yeah, is, that so wrong? is that wrong what I'm doing? I Well, not for you. Not for you, sir. Not yeah. for you. For yeah, you, it's so, perfect. Yeah. You know, I want to thank Rich Moore for firing me. So that's, but, he gave me this opportunity. But it's like those, <laughs> when they catch those people, like they just arrested a woman a little while ago who like left her kid, her infant in a car because she went into a casino to go gamble. And then the, someone called the police on her and she came, you know, they, you know, they arrested her when she came out. And she's like, oh, I didn't mean, I just had to go in there and drop something off. It came right back out. And they're like, you were in there for like an hour. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> oh, that's me. You're equating that's, you're, you're equating me to let, like letting a, an infant stay in the car while I go into a casino. You know, the last time I went into like the uh, still time out. Or, you've taken a, you've taken an unemployment check, which is supposed yes. to be paid for people who are actually looking for jobs. I'm looking for jobs. They ask you for you know three job, <laughs> jobs that you're applying for. What's the last three you applied for? Um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Golf course starter. And, oh, uh, course sure. marshal. And uh, I think it was like at Inglewood, Sahali, and. Oh, so you're applying for all jobs in which you can't get because you don't live there. No, but I'll move back if they hire me. <laughs> You would be a great. I, you know golf what? I, I feel I, I, you're I, rigging on, the on, system. It's okay. Everybody, okay, okay. To the more, people, a lot that, of people to, do it. To anyone who thinks that you know, God, that's just really bad of Jim and what he's doing. I, I'm sorry, but I didn't plan on being fired. I, okay. <laughs> I don't I, think I was anyone still, plans I, on being fired. I, I don't still, think they put it in their Outlook <laughs> was, account and go. I was still going to oh, work through the end. Of, I was still going to work through the end of the year, and you know, at that point, I wouldn't have qualified for unemployment, but. Since they fired my old ass, I'm going to collect on it. Anyway, where do what, you want to go What now? is what We've is your wife? We've avoided the Mariners for like 20 minutes. I'll, I'll, we'll get into them. What is the uh, what does the wife think about you taking the unemployment check and putting it right back into the offshore uh, betting account in which you can't collect any earnings, any money, because it's in Bitcoin? Uh, she doesn't mind one single bit. I'm married that's to why, I'm married that's to why you're some. To her. I have a wife who probably gambles more than I do because anytime. <laughs> 
anytime we go into a restaurant and down here in Oregon, there's quite a few places where they've sure. got a little, they've got a little room where there's the video poker yeah. machines. Yeah. And she's in there every single time playing video Good for poker. Her. Yeah. Good for her. And she can All win right. at it. Well, hey, speaking of this, I think the over under in Vegas for for quickly for the Seahawks, then we'll move on to the Mariners here in a second, is seven and a half. But so I would assume you would take what on that? If the I win total seven. I take the over on that. Okay. USA Today just came out with their predictions yesterday. And Nate Davis, who who does this every single year, and has the Seahawks finishing five and twelve last place in the NFC West. Five and twelve. Well, that's possible too. Like we just <laughs> sure. talked about, if the offensive line doesn't block, that was you know the nugget that you gave us. Uh, they're going to have issues on that side of the ball. Yeah. Well, it, and if it's... it's the only nugget on the team, I'm telling you, you're going to listen to people try to sound smart here for the next month. And I'm telling you, the only thing that you should concern yourself about if you're a Seahawks fan is the offensive line. Can they do anything? Because that's it. That's the whole storyline of the team. Well, no, you talked about the linebackers being a storyline too, though. I've heard in previous oh, well, yeah. previous episodes. Baker and Dotson, at least they passed their physical, so they're back. But you haven't seen them, but hopefully they're they're healthy and ready to go. I'm, but, you know, it's, it's just the same. I, here's the thing with the old line. How many shows, how many years have we been talking about the offensive line for the Seahawks? Since Max Unger left, I think. Yeah. I, I believe you're right about that. Yeah, yeah it's kind of a, a key to making the, the, the whole system go. Yeah, that was really yeah, good wanna, there, Puck. Yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you God, I'm, trans- I'm glad I'm hearing this live. Right. Yes. It, wouldn't, it just wouldn't be as good if it was recorded. Well, it will be podcast uh, yeah. later. We're, someone is listening hey, to Hey, can this you do right? me a favor? Can you do me a favor? Let me interrupt you one more time, and then sure. you, can, you can go on. Can you do, when you do your TikTok soundbite or whatever – yeah. Can you can you can you not lift the part about don't do the part about the unemployment and the, you know gambling with it? Oh no, that that's I've already because, marked it. I've already, I don't, marked it. I've already marked it down. I mean, if if, if people are upset with that, you know, I think it's not cool. That I, that part well, of it's fine, but I, I don't want you know other people out. to find out about it. Why didn't you just tell me that after this was over and <laughs> not when we're doing this live? And then I would have not done it. <laughs> well, this is the kind of crap you like from me, isn't it? Okay, I, I won't. I won't put that as the the clip, even though I want to make it as the clip. But I won't do it. Thank you. Because I don't want you to get a knock on your door from the unemployment services, being like, "Excuse me, sir, are you really applying for the for these jobs?" Um, yeah. Speaking of unemployment, you think Scott Service by the end of the week could be unemployed? <laughs> Come on, um, that's a professional uh, transition. Okay, in light of what happened Monday when service and when we yesterday. saw service after the game, he was at wit's end mm-hmm. and he seemed totally frustrated by what's going on. He he basically had it. So you would think that he basic he probably told his team as much, exactly what he told the media in his press conference and then how they respond. The, how they respond last night? It was like, eh, mm-hmm. eh, geez, Scotty, mm-hmm. we've heard everything you have to say. That's why it makes me start thinking about like Pete Carroll. You know, at at some point, you got to kind of move on. It's not like service is a bad manager. And we can all say that uh, the hand that he's been dealt is pretty shitty. Like, who's the best manager in baseball? You think they could come to Seattle right now and make chicken Mm. salad out of that lineup that he puts out there? I mean, you see, look at that. Yesterday, Rojas, Robles, Cal, Polanco, Rayleigh. And then the last four guys, Locklear, (laughs) Vossler, Moore, and Marlowe. There's no one doing that. It's Who's the so worst team bad. right now? The White Sox. They, their lineup is better than that. It was that I, when they when they unveiled that lineup yesterday afternoon. You know when it came out. I, I mean, I think you sat there and looked at it with just amazement, astonishment, and I think I think every Mariners fan had to chuckle to themselves a little bit. Yeah, and be, and because the the it's funny because they're in first place, <laughs> and you look at that lineup, and you say to yourself. They have no business being in first place. None. No no business whatsoever. But, God, because that pitching staff is so elite. And no one really truly is great. Like, well, especially in their division, right? The Astros are flawed. Rangers are flawed. Although the Rangers are playing better. They're only three back. And they're going to get reinforcements are coming. And then their pitching staff. Um, 
So th- that would be, you know, the, the Rangers in a weird way are the team that should should worry everyone more than maybe the Astros. But yeah, it was funny. Uh, la- funny last night, uh, Mikey got home from his. He's working out at Lost Tracks, a golf course here, and he came sure. home. He he gets so frustrated when the Mariners do poorly, and and he just, you know, he comes in and he's just like furious that they're they're playing so poorly. And I go, I go, yeah, you know, I feel bad for your brother though, because Stevie went to the game. He's in Seattle, and he went to the game last night. He goes, why do you feel sorry for him? What a dumbass going to watch the Mariners. He goes, they suck. That sounds just like Mikey because I follow I follow Michael Moore on Twitter, and sometimes I don't know if I'm I don't know who I'm listening to. I think I think first of all, Mikey, if he wants to get into this business, I think he he's got a future. Yeah, yeah. Because he's always he's always he, bitching. Well, he likes you, the by game. the way. He does. Well, I love Mike. I yeah, love both your he likes boys. You. Steve. Um, and but yeah, I mean, I was thinking about it though. It, has a manager ever been fired when his team's in first place? I, I, I was going to th- – well, when Hargrove left, were they in first place? They were, right? I don't think so, but they'd won like seven or eight in a row. Oh, shoot. I thought they were. They had a big place. winning streak. I know they had a big winning streak. Okay, but he didn't fi- He didn't get fired. He, he quit. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to venture to say if there – it's very few. But he- here's why I bring it up. Um, what if they get swept today? Okay, they get swept by the Angels. And, again, the only thing that's – you look at it, I mean, the Astros have lost their first two games, right, to uh, Oakland. But if they get – if they lose today, and then you're like, oh, my God, they just got swept by a terrible team. I mean, the Angels are awful. And how many how many in a row would that be to the Angels? Five in a row or six in a row? It would be six. Six in a row. Okay, then they go play the White Sox. Okay, and you're like, oh, the White Sox are terrible. Go look who's pitching in the White Sox series. They're facing their two best pitchers. They have Freddie Crochet going? and Crochet, yep. How if about Crochet that? Makes, if he makes that start. Maybe he okay. doesn't because they're going to trade him. But I'm just saying, if they both make that start, you're Fetty and Crochet, you're going to face those two guys. Your offense can't do anything. So now you're asking your pitchers, you got to give up one run, and, that, and that's about it. I, I, my point is, if they – lose today and then I don't know lose two out of three to Chicago I I just could see a scenario yeah where he does get removed from his job because I think ownership is like we need to make a move I don't want to fire the guy who put the team together so let's the next easiest decision is to fire the manager I've heard this from several people that maybe service and Depoto have butted heads more this year than they ever have before so you know maybe there's something to that uh, I asked yesterday on, and I put it out on 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 X. Uh, you know, what if they tailspin here before the deadline? And and you could easily envision them trading someone like Luis Castillo, can't you? Easily. Well, you can, and I saw the comments on your uh, your Twitter post, and Were it you was surprised by surprisingly that. Surprisingly favorable, you know, yeah. to, to the idea, especially when in light of what's he making twenty two million a year or something like that He'll, for the next three owe- years like 24 they'll owe him nearly 75 million dollars for the next three years and i was as well surprised like you to hear so many people be like yeah they should do it damn right it's the easiest decision in the world get rid of him i'm like you know he's pretty damn good like i I don't know why for some reason people don't like castillo or at least the people that commented in that but he's got a career 3.38 era he had one he's had one rough month and that was june He's so was fun good. to watch. I mean, he just Arch looks so effortless out there. Yeah. But and he's he's gotten a little better with giving up the long ball because last year he twenty eight home runs against him. But yeah, uh, yeah. I so it, it's a, it's the weirdest thing though. So happened. like you you mentioned service being fired and your first place team, and that's reasonable to say that because we know it's not going to hold up. And then secondly, has a first place team ever been a a seller rather than a buyer at the trading deadline. And you could almost make a case for the Mariners to do that because you look at that lineup, what are they supposed to do? They add one bat. What's that going to do? I mean, you're just going to pitch around that guy, add two bats, three bats. Yeah. And then if you add two bats or three bats and they're halfway decent, you're going to be getting rid of a lot of great players, a lot of prospects that you have in the farm system. Yeah. But who haven't proven anything? No, I know. But, prove nothing. But you're right. I mean, 
is there, you know, is there one, there certainly isn't just one impactful bat that they can go out and acquire that's going to change everything. Even if like, you know, every everyone's wish list, oh, let me strike that. Not everyone's wish list, but like my desired acquisition would be Vlad Guerrero Jr. Okay, but if you put Vlad in there, like, yeah, I, I mean, I acknowledge he's not going to change everything at all, but he's just, he's he he, he fits a, a a spot you need desperately, that being first base. Hell, he can even play third base too. Um, and he's got power and I don't know, you'd be, you kind of, you'd be a fun acquisition. You've got him under control for another year. Does Sky like the acquisition of Vlad Guerrero or was that River? Uh, no, that was River and the dogs next door barking. Mikey just, <laughs> that Sky there. Okay. Um. Anyway, what what was that again? Oh, Vlad Guerrero, <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> hey, I kind of like the idea. I kind of like the idea, though, of understanding that this isn't going to. be – I mean, let's face it. Let's say the Mariners win the division, you know, and they they're eighty seven and seventy five. And I know that we like to think that, hey, with their pitching staff, I mean, you'll take Castillo, Kirby, Gilbert, and then you got Miller who just threw a shutout. You got yeah. Wu who pitched well, so you know you got pitching in spades, but. Does anybody really think that this lineup – I mean, this lineup today, they're facing a guy that's got an over five ERA, but Griffin Canning will probably look like Cy Young today. And he already oh, did probably. against the Mariners. The last time he faced them, he only gave up four hits in one run. It's it's just a weird thing. And you get in the playoffs and you're facing superior pitching too, and you think these guys are actually going to – win a bunch of two to one games and go to the world series. Well, look at the lineup again today. Right. And again, now a, a lot of this, what is, I haven't of, seen it. What is it? Uh, is, is a lot out of the control because of the injuries, right. To JP and then, and then to Julio. And I'm not gonna make light of the Julio thing, a high ankle sprain. Like I think people hear that and go, Oh, it's just an ankle sprain. Oh, no. not really. Not a no. high ankle sprain. I mean, that, that is a big deal that keeps people out for a long time. So I'm going to kind of – I know he was kind of upbeat and sounded positive yesterday, but I, I kind of want to wait and see, you know, where that uh, where that's at here in the next, you know, you know, 10 days and, and two weeks. And hopefully he's he's ready to come back and, and be ready to go. I mean, they avoided a disaster with that. But uh, Rojas, I, I don't understand that. Here's the thing I would say to Scott Service. Why is he hitting leadoff? Why is, why is Josh Rojas hitting leadoff for you and not Victor Robles? That makes zero sense. But do you have Robles sitting second? Yeah. Again today? Yes. Well, that's not that bad then. Hit him first, but he's a natural leadoff hitter. When they put Rojas where? Does it matter? <laughs> On the bench? <laughs> yeah. You know, I'll get into his stats because someone pointed this out to me and I went back and looked it up. Rojas. Uh, Josh Rojas in his last 31 games has an OPS of 584. He's hitting 200. He has five runs batted in. In the last 31 games, that's how bad he's been. Luke Rayleigh in July, we all love Luke Rayleigh. He was off to a great start. But here's the deal with these guys. And, and Divish it was always hammering this home to me, and, he, and he's right. He's like, you play these guys more, you're going to start to expose them. What have they done with Luke Rayleigh? They started playing him more, right, in July? He's hitting 109 with an OPS of 477. He is what he is. He's he's just a you know he's just an extra outfield guy. He's not a guy you play every day. Mitch Garver disaster. It's an absolute disaster of a of a. Is he uh, in the lineup today? Mitch Garver. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Let me give you the lineup. Rojas, then Robles, Raleigh, Polanco batting. I mean, this is where Polanco batting cleanup for the second po day in a row. Polanco Although he, hitting cleanup. He barreled up a couple balls yesterday oh, and had some yeah, bad was luck. It? Yeah, you like thanks, that barrel left stuff? Yeah. yeah, thanks, Blow. Exit velocity uh, was hit, excellent. Hitting fifth and right field is Hanniger. Your DH is Vossler. So they finally, finally stopped putting Garver in there. If you uh, have Polanco cleaning up and you got Hanniger hitting fifth, that tells you how bad your lineup is right there. Well, Vossler is your DH. Lockler's at first. I want to get into that because he looked – that was a disaster yesterday at first. Uh, Rayleigh's in left field. Dylan Moore is playing shortstop. I mean, that's – that's that's the lineup of a first place team, July twenty fourth. But boy, is anybody going to miss JP? I mean, Dylan Moore will be an upgrade of, over JP. Will he? He's just as good defensively, if not better. And mm. I I'll take Dylan Moore batting in the batter's box than JP right now. I mean, I know I know he's fallen off too. 
I'll but I like how he more isn't anything. I like to the way more more that golf term. He doesn't leave anything in his bag when he swings. I mean, he, he gets leave he, anything he, in his bag. <laughs> he gets after it. I mean, he his does. on base is three oh nine. He hits two oh. Would you rather watch I mean, Dylan Moore or JP Crawford right now? Come on, I don't. I. I mean, neither one of them's good. Nothing. To, I mean, again, it's but less bad. Dylan Moore is less bad than than Crawford right now. Yeah. I think. Well, I mean, Crawford hasn't been good. And then Garver, all. we all know why he's playing because they paid him twelve million this year, twelve million next year. But how many other teams are trotting out a guy that's hitting one sixty eight? One sixty eight with an OPS <laughs> of six twenty eight for your designated hitter, Mitch Garver. It's a guy you paid twenty four million dollars to, Jim. Now listen, in his last thirty seven games, uh, he's hitting one seventy one, three ninety slug. It's consistent then. Yeah, Polanco, 198 with an OPS of 575. Oh, that's good. And he's batting cleanup. That's that's your cleanup hitter. Your cleanup hitter. Your cleanup hitter is hitting 198 with an OPS of 575. And then you already detailed what Rojas has been like lately. And, and Robles, is, oh. we love Robles since he's been in Seattle. He's been terrific. But, I mean, yeah. the Nationals thought so much of him that they just let him go. Oh, and, uh. I, and I don't think he's the, the end-all, be-all. And I think Kruger is right, and and he I didn't really understand it fully until he pointed it out. Kruger the other day was like, um, "Yeah, I mean, I know you got to play him more because offensively, what he does." But I'm telling you, Kruger was like, "He scares me to death in the outfield." I'm like, "What do you mean?" He goes, "You just got to look at," and then he started pointing out all these plays, and and he's right, like he just is. Um, he is. He's. Remember the first. The first fly ball that went to him. He dropped it. Uh, he's misplayed like two or three other balls. He lost him in the sun. He misplayed a ball. Uh, hit to him in the corner when he was in right field. He missed a cutoff or he threw late uh, against the Houston series uh, back into second base, which allowed Bregman to, I think, either advance to third or go home. Um, and then the play the other day when he when he caught that ball or threw home from shallow center field. I mean, it hit the back of the pitcher's mound. Double clutched. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm pretty happy the neighbors decided to mow right now at the end of our our episode. I, I think they probably don't think that someone is doing a <laughs> podcast in their garage. <laughs> that could be. Oh uh, hey, you mentioned Locklear. Okay, I want to ask you like Oh my god. That was that was a That's little That's his ball. That was a little league play right there. We've all <laughs> seen that in Little League what happened last night. That's his ball. <laughs> That the first is his baseman. Ball. Come that on. is his ball. He's got to be more. Whatever happened there, he's got to be more forceful to call Cal oh. off. And Cal wasn't called off though until last minute, so it's not really his fault either. But and then it just like dropped right in front of service. <laughs> oh, and, then, and then I just love the camera. The camera just went right over to service, and he's just like, "F <laughs> me, God." Okay, and then here the other play by Locklear where he didn't. Didn't get the short hop on the Rojas throw. I mean, do, that, I mean, is that do you do you blame him for that? I mean, because I was wondering, like, does Ty France make that play? Does a Gold Glover make that play? It Should was, he uh, have it, made that play? I think short hop. I, I'm always amazed at first baseman how good they are on that. But it's almost like it's routine for those guys to get those now. It, and I'm sure was, he would say that he feels like he should have had it. And yeah, it, that was a big debate out on the on the deck watching the game outside last night with the family. There was it was kind of split. They uh there was uh, the uh, the vampire thought he should have should have caught nah the, the wife thought he should have caught it. Vampire was like, eh, that's a terrible throw. Terrible throw by Rojas. I I think it that's a tough play by Lockley. I'm not going to I'm like you see guys make that at first base a lot and it really is incredible that they make it. Yeah. Uh but I don't think I'm going to I don't think I'm going to blame no, him. No, it's just that. like That's, that was a bad throw by Ross. When the ball's in the dirt, when a pitcher throws it, it's a wild pitch every time. Same thing yeah. with a throw. If it's in the dirt. I it's do agree with it. you with your take, though, on Gilbert, because Gilbert had the error when he threw home on the bunt. I, I am with you 100% on that. Are you? That should be an earned run. Yes. <laughs> he doesn't, he do, He made the error. I know. Why does he get a, why does his ERA get a benefit? Because of the error that he made. Yeah, it makes I, no sense. 
I don't understand that at all. It's that's never made. How many sense. of those four runs were unearned because of him, or was it because of the Rojas error? I I, I forget how that all computes. Um, two. Well, he should, should have at be, least two. That two be, should be for two should be on the Rojas play, right? Yeah. So two and two then. Yeah. Yeah. Chuck World. We'll yeah. Worry. Two and two. Two and two. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm with you though. That it should. I mean, the error he shouldn't get. He shouldn't benefit from that. God, what a weird inning though. Oh, just odd. The perfect he went game. From a perfect per- game to that. Two, yeah, two hits and then and then to see him walk in a run on four pitches. Yeah, that was weird. But um, I I asked this. Uh, the you know I want to play this for you because I'm not sure if you heard this. I I thought. I love talking to Bill Kruger this year. I, I think Bill works for Root Sports. Everyone knows that. And But I think Bill is a little bit more uncensored this year than he has been in the past. Um, Why is that? I, well, I don't think they're using him as much anymore. So I That's think he's, kind of what I figured. He probably thinks, you know, well, they're yeah. going to pull the pull the thing completely next year. I might as well just let her rip. I think that's that's my take. I, you and I are in the same – walking down the same path on that one. And – you know, the we, we got into why, you know, we were talking about the trade deadline, and, and I just said, hey, it's this this season, if offensively acquiring talent was lost in the offseason because they don't, don't, they don't pay. And it, it came, you know, who's what's the biggest issue where this team is at offensively? Is it front office not acquiring the correct talent, or is it is it ownership? And I just want to, I want you to, I'm going to play you. What Kruger said on Monday. I, I, again, I don't think I think this. Th- I think this team is being run. I mean, we're talking about the front office. I think they're they're doing. I think they understand everything. They, they found yeah. pitching under rocks. I mean, they they found guys that have helped them that that nobody else liked, and they've really they've done a good job of actually leveraging all they can control. But when you have an ownership group that doesn't want to spend the kind of money that maybe you need to spend, you know, that's that's not the front office's fault. That's not Scott Service's fault. It's not Jerry's fault. I mean, so I was pretty eye opening what he said. Now, now there's 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 a hundred. Yeah, but we've all speculated. That. We've all said that though, haven't we? We've all said that, but that's the you've never heard that from an employee of the team. And Bill will an probably have a close. He probably will have a closed door meeting after somebody hears that. Perhaps, but he's speaking the truth. I mean, look what they did. I mean, look what they did in the off season. You know, look at all the talent that they shipped out to save money. And look at the guys they brought in who've done nothing. Polanco, Garver, Rayleigh. And the guys that they, you know, they they let walk. Jared Kelnick, Suarez isn't tearing it up. But Teoscar is, and, he, you know, he's in a better situation anyways. But, you know, they went on the cheap this offseason. So I, I don't, you know, when you look at this lineup today, none of us should be surprised that they don't have enough talent on it because the ownership decided in the offseason, we're going to cut payroll. That's why I have brought up the, the whole thing with Castillo. Because, you know, they have shown that they want to strip payroll. And I think they look at a guy, and if they don't really feel that they're in it, does ownership come down to him and go, yeah, we, we just, we're we kind of middling here. We, we should get rid of Castillo and see if we can get some bats back. I just would not well, be okay, surprised uh, you if know. they do it. Well, yeah. I mean, I I get the one side of it where you're thinking, man, you're really trying to make the playoffs and, and getting rid of Castillo is going to hurt in that respect. But you mentioned how much they're they're on the books for with him, $75 million. I get a kick out of it. Like, why would anybody who signs with the Mariners want a no trade clause? I'd have a yes. Tra- I'd have a yes trade clause. Yes, trade, please. Yes, yes, trade. Please. If if we're terrible, trade. He's got yeah, it through. I'll, I'll go to 25. Oakland rather than play here. I mean, yeah. that's yeah. So, but okay. So you get him. Oh, off hold on, the... hold on, real quick. He doesn't have a foot. Like he has it through twenty twenty five. Okay. All right. But, well, whatever. But like, let's say you get rid of him and save seventy five million over the next three years or whatever. Yeah. Okay. So you don't you don't have him pitch anymore. Okay. Fine. You still have Kirby and Gilbert. And Miller and Wu, right. and you know, if you need help from Hancock, maybe okay. And I know Castillo's an elite pitcher, but if you if you get rid of Castillo, you're going to get a good bat back for him, sure. somebody that would really help you. And you would, it might hurt your playoff chances, but it also might help too. And you, and then you'd still be good to go in the playoffs because your lineup would be improved, and you would take a little bit of a hit, and you'd save a bunch of money by losing Castillo. So I'm I'm with you on that. I. I mean, I love. I, I don't want. I love watching him, him just, pitch. I love watching him pitch. But you've got if he's your one A ace, 
I mean, you got one B and one one B plus or whatever in Kirby and Gilbert. So I'm not advocating to trade him. I don't want to trade him. I'm I'm saying is, I think that they are will would consider it. I think that ownership group would consider it. Yeah, and you know, for Jerry, I mean, and and you know, I I don't like Jerry. I just don't. I, you personally, don't? Why personally, don't you like him? Personally, I don't sure like why. Jerry because Have I, I we just talked about that. Why? Yeah, like I just him? get a kick out of it that he got so you know, like irritated with me, you know, like for some con comment I made. Anyway, it's, well, it's, it's in the back. Hold on, hold so on, I, hold on, hold on. I don't, on, uh, wait a minute. I don't, on, I don't like, out. I don't like him personally time because out. if I'm him, I'm thinking, I don't give a shit what some 60 year old guy on the radio says about me. And he's got thin skin. He's a pussy is what he is. When it comes hey, to that. Hey, he is. Say he that. is. You he is. No, no, no. You need to have thicker Wait, skin than he's got. He's not, he doesn't what have did you skin. say to he, him? But he doesn't, like, did, criti he doesn't what, like criticism. What did you Screw say you to him? Screw you with the him. Oscars music, okay? What did you say to him that got him upset? Well, there were two things that I did. One, I said that uh, that team, that remember that when what's-his-name was at shortstop? Uh, he could hit, but he couldn't feel. You, you said that that I've seen little league teams play better defense than. No, I yours. said my kids' team. They were it was okay. a fourteen year old team. And they're fourteen so. old. So do you think the GM? And then then I wrote a story. Of the team should be a little bit upset. I read if he's a story on I, the flagship station. Well, then I wrote. <laughs> then I wrote a story saying I didn't think Jerry Depoto should be in charge of the rebuild. Maybe that was it too. Uh, okay, what uh, I'm getting what I'm getting at I is, think that uh, talk, is fair. Talk, what I'm getting at is that if I'm him, if I'm Jerry Depoto, do you think I'm gonna care what some guy on the radio station says about me? No, I wouldn't care. I just I pass it off cares. like, oh God, he... this guy, you know, he's over the hill anyway. I'm not gonna care what he says. Right. I don't think it, he cares what you wrote about like, him if like, you're well, critical I, of I him. Want, if if I'm gonna continue when... to be on that station, I'm gonna, you know, not be on the afternoon show anymore. Yeah, oh, wow. Okay, Jerry. I think I but, think I think if I was the president of the team and I'm on the flagship station <laughs> and a guy who's the afternoon host <laughs> says to me, My kid's fourteen year old <laughs> baseball team plays better defense than yours, I think I'd be offended too. That's just me, but maybe my problem though, and your problem too. My problem is that you I have a problem. At, at least when I worked at 710, I had a hard time. I always thought about the person driving around and they don't want to hear a bunch of softball stuff, do they? they don't, no, I mean, I, I, I hate think... <laughs> I, I hate that. I hate that on root sports. I hate it on 710. I hate all of that. I'm sorry. You know, if a guy sucks, just tell us, you know. I well, think you he's, can be you know, when, critical of the team without, like, insulting the guy. You know, I, I love baseball terms, too. You know, well, you know, he's been scuffling. You know, this <laughs> guy's always scuffling. Well, when is this team going to stop scuffling? You know, and when are you going to tell us that they're they're not just scuffling, they suck? You know, anyway, I, yeah. I was going to give the photo a compliment. And then we got sidetracked. Believe it or not, I was going to give him a compliment because any GM in the league wants to spend as much money as possible to get better players because if you have better players you're going to have a better team and you're going to have better job security because you have a better team <laughs> so so jerry but jerry wow. can't do that yeah that was the, yeah was that I almost mean, like was that almost like the offensive line needing to block similar <laughs> very similar <laughs> It's kind I, of, I just think the you know, it's kind of fun issue... being in this position where you can just say whatever you want on yeah, your podcast. Well, we'll yeah. talk about it afterwards, what you can and can't say. <laughs> we'll have a show meeting. What, don't, don't say pussy again. Is yeah, that... <laughs> I, I, yeah, that's probably. Okay, how about wuss next time? Sure, that's better. Okay, sorry. God, that's are you going to can me? Thinking about it. <laughs> Do I have to pay you a severance? <laughs> no, you're not paying me anything now. Why that's would you true. pay me severance? That's a that's a fair point. <laughs> yeah. Number one issue with this team has and will always be ownership. Uh, it just always will be. Yeah. Until they prove until they prove us um, to, uh, wrong. I mean, it just will be. It's always been the issue, um, and it's just it, you know it's 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 hard. I I just don't care about hatback grill and. All the other stuff that they do, I know it's great and it's fun and all that, but I just, I, I just want a winner and I want them, I want them to be invested. 
a hundred percent like this fan base is, like those players are, in just delivering a winner. Just, you know, it took me a long time to come around to your way of thinking there because I really like John Stanton, and, and I base that just sure. on him being the exchanges I've had with him. Uh, have always been good and positive, and he seems like a guy that really wants to win publicly, but privately he hasn't. Mm. That group hasn't shown that. No. All right, let's uh, wrap up the daily puck drop, the DPD. Uh, normally we tape this, but uh, you're listening to it uh, live or watching it live. I guess you're not listening to it live. You're watching it because we're on YouTube and X right now. If you're listening to it. Uh, strictly just listening to it, you are listening to it recorded on Apple and Spotify. We wrap it up with uh, Hey What the Puck. Uh, it's brought to you by Restoration Restoration One of North Seattle, your restoration company that lets you avoid the stress of water, fire, and mold damage with their property restoration services. Locally owned and operated, make them your first call when damage affects your residential or commercial property. Give them a call, 206-817-8917. Ask for Trent or Derek. Derek's the taller, better-looking one, by the way. Oh, I'm uh, sure Trent appreciates on, that. Yeah, visit them online at restoration1.com, the North Seattle franchise. You know what? I mean, I know this. What they the decision that they made yesterday in our first story for Hey, What the Puck was really just based on not an FU to the college football playoff, but kind of a minor one. Good on the Rose Bowl. Rose Bowl has asked the college football playoff committee uh, to remove them from the rotation of the semifinals because they want to remain on January 1st every year, kickoff, 2 o'clock. Uh, they, will, they just want to be the quarterfinal games. That's it. Uh, they're going to be hosting the quarterfinals the next two years anyways, and those will be on January 1st. But they do not want to be in the semifinal rotation. So good for the Rose Bowl. I, can we just have a little bit, some tradition left in this country? just something where it's like it's normal and it's comfortable like a nice old blanket i'd like to wake up on january 1st and i'd like to look at my watch and go you know what coming up today at two o'clock or one o'clock whenever it is uh, i'm gonna sit back on the couch kick up my feet i know it's not the traditional big 10 and, and pack 10 matchup anymore but i want to watch the rose bowl is that okay that's fine with me. And I, yeah, I used to, I mean, New Year's Day, it used to be, I, I forget what, you'd have the Cotton Bowl in the morning. That would be the Cotton Bowl was game. the first one. Yeah. Yeah. And you'd maybe have the Outback Bowl or whatever, but it was just kind of the warm up, the appetizers, but you knew the Rose Bowl was coming. Yeah. And you also knew the Orange Bowl and Sugar Bowl were coming in the evening. Oh, God. That's, when that's the Fiesta. A... Remember, we went Cotton, Rose, then it was the combo of like Orange, Fiesta, Sugar. Yeah. God, yeah, it was. Best. Wasn't that the best? Good for the Rose Bowl. Yeah, yeah. I them. mean, well, I'm just like you. I mean, the whole college football scene bums me out, you know. And I yeah. see Canzano going back to Indianapolis, and weird. It's just weird to me to, you know, the Big Ten being back there, you know, in Washington, was Oregon, so, USC, UCLA. It was so weird, uh, and I would encourage people to go back to listen to Tuesday's episode with John Canzano, one of the only Northwest. I think he's the. Actually, I'll strike that. I believe he's the only Northwest reporter back there. Didn't the, time, didn't the Times send somebody? I don't know if they did. They haven't replaced Varel yet, have they? I don't know. Have they? I don't. I, I think they have, but I'm, I'm blanking on the on the on the person's name. I think they have. Yes. Okay. But a prominent voice, a prominent figure. He's the only one back there, Canzano. So I would go read uh, John Canzano at John Canzano. Uh, dot com. Even the very latest, he caught up. He did a one on one with the Big Ten Commissioner Tony Petiti. Uh, which is up there right now, but he was. We did the show yesterday, and it, and it was. He goes, it's surreal. You look around Lucas Oil Stadium, heart of Midwest Big Ten country, and you see, you know, the Ducks logo, the Huskies logo, the Trojans, the Bruins. He says it's odd. He yeah. said the Ducks. I don't know if you've seen the picture. The Ducks put a huge inflatable duck in the river. Yeah, it's massive. And um, but what was also weird? He goes, you know, what's also just surreal. He goes, I'm looking up on the on the Big Ten TV set. There's Yogi Roth. He was hired by the Big Ten. Ashley Amundsen, hired by the Big Ten. Uh, Guy Haberman, hired by the Big Ten. And he's like, it's so weird to see those people up there hosting these shows on the Big Ten Network when, you know, a month ago they're signing off on the Pac-12 and crying. Yeah, you see the good news for us, though? We well, get we Michael Yale. Yeah. We get the Michael Yale yeah. on yeah. CW. So we get to see him with the, the Pac-2. So that'll be good. 
I'm trying, you know me, I'm just Mr. Positive looking for the bright side of things all the time. So I thought you would enjoy that if you hadn't heard that news. Okay, I got another one for uh, Hey, What the Puck? And you'll appreciate this because a, a parent of three with, with two boys that are in college right now. Do your kids still ask you to to buy them things and pay for things even though they have a job making their own money? Um, I haven't heard that lately, but I okay. do think that with, with our kids at home this summer that they shouldn't have to pay for their own meals. Is it, I mean, even I know when they go out. So, okay. So even when I they think, go out, like I handed Mikey 20 bucks the other day. Cause I knew he was going to this sandwich place called Chiba hut down here that everybody likes going to. Sure. Yeah. I know. Um, yeah. I don't think my kids when they're at home should have to pay to eat or anything okay. like along those lines. So I pick and up I'm Mary paying for Lou. his golf today, but go ahead. Well, good for you. I pick up Mary Lou from practice and you know, we're driving home and it's a long drive. It's, it took two and a half hours to get from Ballard to Bellevue. <laughs> to South Center, back to Ballard. Two and a half hours. That's just, un it's unbelievable how bad it is. And she goes, well, I said, are you hungry? Well, yeah. I go, well, I have some sandwich, you know, stuff at home. She's like, no, I don't want that. I want, I want mod pizza. I'm like, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll pull in. I said, you, you got your money? Oh, can't you pay for it? I'm like, well, time out. She's 15. Pay for her damn meal. Hold on. I haven't finished my, my point here. <laughs> She has like summer babysitting jobs, which she's got a lot of money piled away in that little green light card of hers. Like over a thousand, like I want to say like a couple grand. And I'm like, I'm not getting anything. I've had lunch already. Like if I were having lunch with you, I'd pay for it. But I'm like, why can't you pay for it? I just, I don't think I should have, <laughs> this was her line. And you've probably heard this and parents have heard this. I don't think I should have to pay for food. I think that's your responsibility. I, well, you know, I have not heard that from my kids, but I, I would agree with her. You would agree with Mari. Okay. Yeah, All I right. would, especially being 15 years old. All right. So I'm being the Her animal. dad's a tightwad, though. I, you know, I haven't gotten into this yet, but, I mean. You, you're, I don't you're, think you should have to tip if the service isn't good. It's not you're, just you're, a, Your tipping thing is, it's, yeah. It's, it's appropriate. You live in Seattle where everything is $19, $20 for a sandwich. I don't need to tip 20% for it. I have a hard time the way they're no. doing the new the new iPad way of doing things. And then they turn it around to you and 10%, oh, I, 15, 20, I, custom. I like, I like no tip. And I like looking at them right when I hit it. <laughs> no tip. And then I flip it around just to make sure they saw the no tip. Yeah. It's supposed to be for when you act have actual service at the table in the restaurant. Of course, that's what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Um, all right, last story on Hey, What the Puck, uh, which is brought to you by Restoration One. Did you know what uh, today is? Happy Robbie Ray Day. I see he's pitching today. He is making his first start in 16 months. He's taking on the Doyers uh, today. He was, of course, traded to the Giants for Mitch Hanniger and Anthony Descalfani, Descalfani, I believe his name was, uh, who uh, Descalfani, who they traded then to Minnesota for Jorge Polanco. How has Hanniger done this year? Well, 206, 284, 331, OPS of 615. Robbie Ray in his tight pants uh, will be making his first start in 16 months today for the san francisco giants i can't well wait to tell the uh, vampire about that because he hey, there is no one on this planet that dislikes robbie ray more than my 10 year old son no because one. of your don alvarez uh it started before that he just hates him he just he's like every time he would come and i've told the story before we're back on radio when with the last two years ago whenever it was against the a's and he, he walked the first batter, and he just started booing him. And he started yelling at service to get him out of the game. <laughs> well, it seemed like with Robbie Ray, you could always – you never got the Cy Young guy that you thought yeah. you were going to get. But there was always one inning a, a start. If you yeah. could take that one inning away, he was sensational. But there, there always seemed to be one inning where he had trouble. Hey, this was a real long – remember, we were supposed to keep these at 30 minutes. We went an hour here on the Daily Puck Drop, the live Daily Puck Drop, the DPD with Jim yeah. Moore. I took up too much of your time. Much like Biden, you started to drift away a little bit. So I did not start to drift away. 
You started losing me when I called Depoto a name. I, I, you know, I'm sorry. I, I apologize for that. That's not cool. I, you know what I appreciate about what you're doing in this venture here is that you're not just going crazy with swearing. You don't need to swear. It's weird. And, I, I and can't sometimes do it I say much. the S word, you know, occasionally I've thrown out the F word, but we don't need, we don't have to do that. I, so I apologize I, to listeners for calling Depoto a name. I thought I would swear more, and then I started doing it. I'm like, it just doesn't work. No. I think it's the 23 years of being in live radio where you couldn't. I think there's kids that are listening or watching, too. And so... <laughs> well, we're big in the uh, the 8 to 12. You, have, your kids heard you say the, have your kids heard you say the F word? Of course. Well, you say of course, and my kids yeah. have, too. But I really respected my dad. I, the, first time I heard him, the first time I heard him say that word, I was in my 20s. Hmm. You know, and so, yeah, I mean, do I need to say the F word around my kids? No. Do we need to swear on the podcast? No. Okay. So I'll try and I'll, I'll try and clean it up. We've learned uh, we've learned a, a valuable lesson here uh, today on Wednesday's edition. Again, Jim will be on. He's on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays on the Daily Puck Drop, the DPD. We normally release them every day at 10 a.m. Sometimes we will, uh, f I think, a little bit more frequently, we'll sprinkle in some of these live shows so you can always check us out live on x and also on youtube just search puck sports there on youtube of course you can always listen to these shows later at pucksports.com watch them on youtube also uh, follow along on apple spotify wherever you find your podcast please like subscribe all of it leave comments uh subscribe away on all of the uh, different channels and again all of it the one-stop shop is up there at puck sports Com. You can follow uh, Jim there on X at uh, Coogs Go. You can follow me on uh, X and also on Instagram at Puck2040, also on TikTok at Puck underscore sports, and, of course, on Facebook. Uh, okay, bring it in Puck for a landing. Let's Come on, you're just circling the airport. You're just circling, circling, circling. Bring it in I'm for a damn landing. I'm getting all the Jesus things. Jesus Christ, are you kidding me? Come on. I'm trying to get all the things set up here. Normally, all of our guests are released at 1 o'clock. Ryan Davis today. Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. Wherever you get your podcast. Yeah, if the offensive thing. line doesn't block, they're not going to move the ball. <laughs> what can Jerry do if he doesn't have money to spend on players? I don't know. <laughs> We're going to do another live show with Ryan Divish today after the Mariners game. So look out for that around 3.30-ish when uh, the, the M's game goes final. He's done interviewing all the players uh, down there in the uh, in the clubhouse, we'll do a live show with Ryan Divish today in his weekly appearance, bi-weekly appearance, brought to you by Shally Bull. All right, Jim, we'll talk to you on Friday from your garage in Bend, Oregon, okay? All right, sounds good. Thanks, bud. There he is, uh, Jim Moore, the go-to guy again every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday here at PuckSports.com. Uh, we'll talk to you later. And as always, we promise to be better. Shirt, no shoes, no, no dice. So. Would anybody like to smoke some pot? Yeah. I was born to love you. I was born to lick your face. I was born to rub you. But you were born to rub me first. What do you need my address for? We like to send out a mailer. <laughs> Mother of mercy, I don't speak Japanese! <laughs>